Hey everybody, welcome back. And I, I think the weather is just messing with me today. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but uh, it rained quite a bit this morning. And I said, this is gonna be great. I've been wanting to do a project pertaining to rain gear. So I'm gonna get out here in the rain and talk about rain gear. Lo and behold, as I'm driving over here, blue skies. Just messing with me. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and talk about this anyway, because I do have a project that I am about to embark on. little project, but I think it's going to be pretty cool. Um, and I first kind of wanted to lay the, the groundwork for what and why I was trying to accomplish. So first off, rain gear. Do you even need or want rain gear? Um, and I know that's, that for some people it's like a, a duh thing. You'd be surprised how many people say, I don't, I don't need rain gear. And depending on the application, well, not only that they don't need rain gear, but you don't need rain gear. Depending on the application, they may be right. Um, I know people who hike, especially in summertime, they go without rain gear. And if it rains, they, they get wet. No big deal. Which, when you look at that application and kind of pick that and pull that apart, yeah, they're right, actually. Um, number one, it's usually not cold weather, which it's actually not that cold a day, but it is autumn. It was cool this morning. It will probably be cool again tonight. Um, but if you were even backpacking, you're moving, you're hiking, you're backpacking, you're, I mean, even cross-country skiing, if you're constantly moving, you're generating that body heat and you're, you're warm. You don't really need rain gear. In fact, if you were wearing this right here or pretty much any rain gear, you're going to start sweating and you're going to get wet anyway. So... In that application, yeah, you don't really need rain gear. Let's talk people who actually do want rain gear. So, obviously people who work out in the rain. I mean, obviously like, like you're, uh, well the guys doing the deadliest catch stuff, they want rain gear, sure. Anybody out on like a fishing boat maybe, where it, not even rain, but the, the water splashing up on onto you and it's just cold, sure. Um, anybody who's going to come out here in the woods and just be stationary. So, hunters, bird watchers, of course, military guys standing post. You know, obviously, um, my ham radio guys who are going up doing like a summits on the air type of thing. And they're just going to sit there for hours on end and make contacts. Maybe they want rain gear. Maybe they want like a tent. Maybe both. There's a point at which the line can get a little blurred. We're going to talk about this. Of course, the survival community loves rain gear as well. Um, but again, that's because they might be put in one of those positions um, where they would want rain gear. So, different types of rain gear that I have. This being the first one, this is a full-on Gore-Tex suit. I'm going to back up a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Um, this is what is it, Adventure Tech by proper and this is an actual Gore-Tex brand they got the stupid branding all over it uh, I mean really like here 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 every stinking zipper has got their branding on it which is kind of annoying and I probably will uh, at some point will take these off I say that I've had this for years this has not been manufactured for years at some point I will probably take these off and put just a generic um, string cordage pull tab on there but I still haven't done it so I, will I really? I don't know um, Gore-Tex top and bottom similar to the military what they have um, when I was in the Corps we had a, a woodland pattern I'm sure they have Marpat camouflage now the Army's got their own um, not ACU multicam no I forget I forget what they call it, sorry. Um, but they've got their own camouflage pattern. Yeah, but the idea is the same. You get rain gear, 
great for standing post. Uh, Gore-Tex top and bottom. It's a little bit breathable. Not really, though. The cool thing about this is that it covers everything. Like, the only thing not covered is my hands and my feet. Even without the hat. Uh, there's actually a hood that rolls up and tucks into the, um, the collar here. So this is one. This is one thing. It is very, very specific. I used to use this a lot when I was working my last job where I would often be outside. If I was outside, it was raining. This was great. I would go all day. If I get a little warm, there actually are, I can find it, uh, what they call pit zips, where the armpit area unzips and you actually get some ventilation in there. Um, really handy. And they do great. However, when we start getting out into the woods and start wanting to do other things, they're not that versatile. The cool thing is, though, it's, it's tucked in tight to your body. It's just regular clothes, only it's waterproof. Um, works great for when you need a lot of mobility. You need to be able to move your arms. You need to have stuff not getting in the way. I like this. Downside, it's really expensive. I actually bought this as a closeout, which is why I know they don't make this anymore, because they weren't making it then, and they were closing it out, and I ended up getting um, just lucky and I don't even know how long ago that was but I got these as a closeout and I paid significantly less than I would have uh, had I bought them at uh, full retail, retail price. Cool, I'm gonna move on to the next one. All right, here we go. Here's the next type of ring. Get it and talk about the poncho. It's Literally nothing but a single waterproof sheet of fabric and a hood. All right, I got the hood right in the middle. I've got snaps on the edge. I've got a grommet right here. I've got another one on the corners. Another one down here. Yeah, it's neat. It's really cool. It. It really provides good coverage. I've got lots of ventilation, of course. You see right here. One of the advantages of this is that it not only provides coverage for me. If you look back here, I've got a small backpack on underneath this. And it provides coverage for the backpack. By the way, that's very good because that hand transceiver you see right there is not waterproof. So, downsides. Good, well, upside, downside, it is a one-size-fits-all garment. Now, for the military who developed this, that's good, because you can simplify your operations, uh, your supply side. You can simplify um, issuing gear, because everybody gets the same poncho. You get a poncho, and you get a poncho, and you get a poncho. Everybody gets the same exact same. It is a one-size-fits-all garment. The problem with that is one size fits all is short for one size fits almost nobody so if you notice this only comes down to my knees i'm tall i understand at the same time if i were to give this garment to let's say my daughter or even some of the guys that i served with who were uh vertically challenged aka they're short um they're almost tripping over this thing so it, it does have its strong points, one of them being right here. This is a uh, German military surplus version of this same garment. They actually do something cool where they have a snap right here that holds that hood together. And this is why. Because you can take this poncho and, you know what? Just why? I don't know. Everything's working against me today. You can take this poncho and you can string it up as a tent. Pardon me while I reattach that. Okay, sorry about that. Honestly, this is not how I would set it up if I were actually trying to do it. I would at least guy these out, and you can see that underneath I would have a nice dry space to, well, not be wet. Really cool, really multi-purpose, obviously for the military. 
Um, good stuff because you can give this guy one piece of gear and it's a tent, it's rain gear, it's keeping him and his equipment dry. Beautiful. Um, the problem is, well, one of several problems is it's military surplus. I have yet to find a good civilian manufacturer of this uh, poncho. I've seen some that were like emergency ponchos, which were basically a trash bag. And if I'm going to use that, I might as well just use a trash bag. At least then I can pick up trash with it, and it's stupid cheap. Um, but one of the problems with this is, one, it's only available in military colors. Two, it's military surplus. They're getting rid of them for a reason. Now, obviously not a big deal when this is in perfectly good condition, but the Army can't make up its mind what camouflage pattern it wants. All you guys that served with ACU and only blended in with the gravel pit and grandma's couch, you know what I'm talking about. They got rid of a bunch of these. And there's now a bunch of ACU ones that if all you want is a good waterproof garment, you can get this in gravel flage or couch -a flage or whatever you want to call that stuff. Um, but the other thing is they're surplus for a reason. Sometimes that is they're getting old and you notice this right here is where I've had to patch this one up. Um, I like these. This one, the, the German version, is actually a little bit thicker and more rubberized than the U.S. version, but it's old. Like, it's falling apart old. Um, not that it's not standing up right now. Um, my hasty knot tying aside. They're good. They're just limited. Obviously limited in size, limited in um, what I can cover with them, limited in the fact that they're old and getting older. Of course, the other thing with military surplus stuff is sometimes military surplus is great because it's stupid cheap because the government's just, just dumping this stuff. And then sometimes it's stupid expensive because it very rapidly went from nobody cares and they can't get rid of them fast enough to oh my word this is this really awesome thing that is now a collectible um that's just the the military market in general um you see that in guns you see that in pieces of gear that are more practical even for uh people who are not in the military so I've always been on the lookout, because I love these. I actually do like these. I like the versatility of it. I like the coverage. I like the fact that I can throw something on my back and have that protected as well. Um, but for all its shortcomings, I've always been on the lookout for something better. Something maybe longer. Uh, something, well, maybe available even. Because there's been times where you... You couldn't find these unless you wanted to pay stupid money for them. So that has led me to an interesting place. And it's sort of always one of these things. It's this sort of simmering back burner in my mind. And what happened was I saw this guy's video where he was talking about um, taking a bed sheet, of all things, and then turning that into a waterproof tarp for like ultralight camping and uh, just backpacking in general. I thought that was really cool. And I sort of filed that away in my mind like, huh, I'm gonna have to try that one of these days because I do appreciate just having a tarp. Um, and then, I don't know, I'm idly scrolling through Instagram when I should be something doing something that's not Instagram and this guy pops up Looking like he's trying out for the role of Loki in the next Marvel movie. Turns out it's not far wrong. He's into uh, Viking age or, or Viking clothes and period dress and LARPing and all that stuff. Which I think people are really quick to dismiss. And I understand why on one hand because some of that can get a little bit too... Uh, off into fantasy land, but then when you look at some of the stuff, especially historically accurate stuff, that stuff existed for a reason, 
And it wasn't always just style. In fact, a lot of it, especially when you had to work really hard to make something, a lot of that stuff had a practical application. And here he is talking about a cloak. And now he's talking about one from the perspective of being warm and keeping wind off of you, but, well, the thing works pretty darn well keeping rain off you, too. So I had the idea, take these two, combine them, and use a bed sheet plus waterproofing, which is essentially what this is. It's really thin, about the thickness of a bed sheet, even though this is out of nylon. And then waterproofing, this is rubberized. Well, I don't know about this. I can take what well, this guy was suggesting, do a silicon... Um, dilute silicon, and then soak the bed sheet, hang it up, let it dry. So I'm going to be doing exactly that, and then I'm going to see how well this works as a cloak, something that I could not only use to keep myself dry, but maybe even set up like this, and have more coverage for a tall guy like me, who also wants to keep his gear dry as well. Um, stay tuned I'm going to be doing that and I'll evaluate it against this against the Vortex and see how they hold up in multiple applications alright alright here we go if you guys went and watched the other video you'll know that uh, what we've done here is we've taken some naphtha and some silicone in a uh, 5 to 1 ratio, approximately, give or take. And mixed it up in here. I didn't show that. Go watch the video. Um, and now all I'm doing is I'm just kind of taking this and all these dry spots that you see, I've got to go through and I gotta kind of squeeze this out. Soak those dry spots. He does this in a bag. I like doing it in a bucket because I can kind of pull this out and see. But I will warn you. Watch out that naphtha, that silicon, that is rugged stuff. You don't want to be breathing that in. Obviously, I'm outdoors. Do it in not just a, a well-ventilated area does not really begin to express the amount of ventilation you need for this stuff. Um, I highly recommend outdoors. But that's me. So, I'm not seeing too many of these dry spots left, so I think it's about ready to hang up. I don't see any dry spots left. Cool. It may have gone a little thick on this. I had to use uh, more silicon than he did. Uh, more mixture, because I'm using a large, I'm probably using a larger sheet. I'm not entirely sure. There we go. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. You can't really tell, but it's already started to dry. Let me get a little bit closer. There we go. Not that you can even tell that it's drying because of all the uh, the modeling from the trees, but one thing I wanted to point out that I hadn't heard anybody talk about, this right here, this, this strip of fabric that's just doubled over on itself where you would put that towards the head of the bed. Decide right now whether or not bubbles or wrinkles or what have you are going to bother you because I suspect that is going to get bonded together. Now one thing you could do is if you want to think ahead, cut a hole right there in the end and run some PVC pipe up there. Uh, I don't even know what diameter that would be, but that would separate that and that would allow you to do something like a uh, bivy shelter, put a uh, small tent pole in there, and then you could, um, I don't even know how you'd rig that up, probably a piece of string to secure that at the bottom, make that tent pole bend, and then uh, keep that off your face. It's an idea. I don't know that I actually use it because, well, the whole point of this is to be a single piece of multi-purpose cloth, and I think it's going to work out really well. Also, uh, I don't know if you can see that there. I'm almost right on the ground. In fact, I had to use a, a bucket and some milk crates to get that up high enough. A queen sheet was probably overkill, but I'm going to be left with a really nice tarp. So, ah, pick your poison. Other than that, I've really got nothing to do. 
other than just kind of sit back and let this thing cure. All right, here we go. Check it out. It's been sitting overnight. I really hope you all appreciate my lovely Eastern Red Nekistani clothespins there. I don't know if you see this on the camera. Oh, there it is. There it is. Right there. This is this really dark spot. And at first, I thought that was, um, I thought it was still wet. But touching it, it's actually not. Now this, this down here kind of feels like cloth. And then you look up there, that, that feels like a silicon, but it's, it's dry. And let's see, come on down here. I got another uh, heavy spot here. I'm, I am guessing that this was an inconsistency in my mix. And if I had mixed that consistently, you wouldn't see that. But can't 100% say that. But yeah, probably. That's, that's probably what it was. So mix your stuff better than I did. Time to get this bad boy down. All right, first observation is this is definitely heavier than when it was just cloth. This is, second observation, this is probably bigger than I needed. I know I already observed that already. Um, so let me try this thing out. So let's see, gather it up enough. I got it off the ground, which y'all can't really see that because y'all only see my upper torso here. Take this, put it on that shoulder. All right, I'll take this and we'll put it on that shoulder. All right, well, let me throw a hood up here. Not gonna lie, I, I feel like, all right, seriously, that's not cool. All right, two observations. Number one, um, this is going to take some getting used to. Uh, number two, I seriously look like I belong on somebody's D&D &D character sheet or like in a Bible storybook or something. But if it looks stupid and it works, well, it probably ain't stupid. We'll try it out. If it does work, I think this is going to be a really great solution. Um, next time... I am definitely not putting uh, that much silicon in there, and I'm definitely going to mix it a little more thoroughly. Maybe get like a, uh, I don't even know what you call them. There's a mixer that's just a wand with like a little propeller looking thing on it. You put that on a drill and you go to town, just whir on, spin that around, and you mix up. Uh, it's made for mixing paints and um, epoxies and, and all that other kind of stuff. So. I think it'd be just a thing for that application. I'll probably use one of those next time. I am sure there will be a next time. If nothing else, I want a waterproof to backpacks. And this would be, the silicon mixture is just the stuff for it. I do think that five to one ratio is probably the better ratio. And you won't come out with the, the dark, heavy spots. But then again, I didn't come out with too dark and heavy spots out here. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just a mix. I will field test this and see if it works. I, I am very confident just feeling this cloth that it has got silicon all in there and it will work. Which I'm really excited about because unlike a lot of these that just have a, a layer on one side, this is actually down in the cloth. And then one of the things that, that people complain about cotton for is it absorbs a liquid like water uh, very easily and it wants to retain that. Well, I think that property is actually going to make cotton a really good choice for one of these tarps. Anyway, until next time, get out there, do cool stuff. I will add make cool things. Most importantly, y'all take care of each other, all right? See you next time.